Okay, good morning and welcome back everyone to our Tuesday morning market outlook session. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the chief strategist here at Options Play. And today we're gonna to take a look at where the markets currently sit, what trends we're currently looking at, and some of the research that is driving our investment decisions here at Options Play. So let's go ahead and get started. Before I do, just a quick disclaimer, what we're gonna discuss today is purely for demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any specific securities. So let's first start and talk about the overall market. This is something that we've discussed for many weeks as we had the initial sell-off. We've had a very strong subsequent rally. Over the past few weeks, the market really has been battling it out around this 284, 285 level. We've been in this range since basically the beginning of April. We poke a little bit above it, break below below it, and then we've really had this range bound motion, if you will, very long uh, and protracted battle here around 285. On Thursday morning of last week, markets started to open looking like it was particularly weak. VIX went back into backwardation. Looks like risk was off. There was starting to look like there was a bit of momentum to the downside. I myself even put on a small put hedge for SPY in case that the markets crashed here. But before 10.30 a.m., markets had a reversed higher, and we basically had three back-to-back -back up days. Now, three back-to-back -back up days, generally speaking, is a pretty strong indication, especially when you have broad participation in the market, which is really what we saw. So I think at this point, it's pretty clear that the bulls have taken over this particular market. Yesterday, we retested the 295, which is a relative all-time high here. The one thing I will note is something that I've been talking about for the past few weeks is the fact that as we kept moving higher on this uh, higher highs and, and higher lows, momentum has not confirmed that move. It has only been moving sideways. But on the weekly chart, this is the first time that we managed to poke back above the 20 week moving average. That in itself is a pretty bullish move since we've had multiple weeks where the, where the markets were rejected at that 20 week moving average, four weeks that the markets were rejected and we managed to break above it. So that certainly is a very bullish indicator. Uh, money flow remains relatively weak, so we still see a high risk of pulling back. But as we noticed here in the markets between November and uh, the end of February, markets can remain overbought and, and show signs of exhaustion for long periods of time before you really get a pullback here. As we saw here, every time the market advanced, uh, we had a very small pullback, but continued to advance. And each time we saw this type of divergence and momentum, momentum kept slowing down, but that doesn't stop the markets from moving higher. We're basically very similar situation that we currently are in right now, just that the markets are a little bit more choppy. You know, we have about three, four percent move to the upside, three, four percent move to the downside. So you have a very uh, more choppy trading um uh, price action currently here. So that's how we're currently viewing the markets. We're certainly in a more, much more bullish tone. We absolutely think that we're going to get a retest of 302. 302 is a major resistance level. We break back above 302. I think we are off the races back towards 340. And I know that that sounds pretty crazy. And especially if you look at valuations, that looks even crazier. But this is the market that we're currently trading in. And this is the reality. Now, you know, up till now, we, we've had a bit of leadership change. Uh, originally, the, the the rally was fueled from healthcare, uh, then technology took over, but now consumer discretionary is starting to take over some of this leadership. Um, consumer discretionary over the past month has moved somewhat sideways for the most part, which is, in my opinion, understandable given the outlook of consumer spending in this particular country. But yesterday, we broke out above that trading range and that paves the way for consumer discretionary to continue to move higher, which predominantly is going to be Amazon and Home Depot, which make up about uh, almost 40% of this index uh, is the consumer discretionary index because it is a market cap weighted index. So leadership is starting to change from healthcare to technology to a consumer discretionary. You know, consumers is, was the largest driver of our economy prior to COVID-19, uh, but leadership right now is currently still in the consumer uh, discretionary um, sector, and we have seen leadership broaden, broaden out. So 
small caps joined the rally yesterday. It was up about almost 6% when the markets were up 3%. So we are continuing to see this, lead, this leadership not just be in the mega cap names and the large cap names, but small caps are starting to join this rally. IWM is still below this major 135 level. If it breaks above it, we certainly believe that IWM could easily make it up into the 140, 145 range and continue to join this particular rally. So it's one area of the market to continue to look at. IWM has managed to make its way back above its December 2019, 2018 lows. It still sits below the 20 week moving average, which requires, which is a major resistance area here for the uh, small caps. But if we can break above that, certainly broadens the leadership here, which is supportive of this market continuing to move higher as, as silly as that may seem. So right now, our expectation is the market is going to have a test of 300, 302, which is a major resistance level on the S&P. VIX is now below 30, which means that volatility is starting to come down. We've been talking about selling volatility predominantly for the last few weeks. With VIX below 30 and oil rebounding to 32 and starting to, to be near its resistance level and, and stabilizing, we certainly think that now is the time to start testing the waters for buying volatility, meaning buying calls, buying puts, buying debit spreads, because volatility is a little lower, buying options is going to be a little cheaper. So it's something to keep in mind that we are starting to get to that point where we're going to start switching from predominantly selling option strategies to more buying, especially as directional moves start to accelerate. We are at 263 very liquid option symbols, which is the highest we've seen in a long time, which tells us that, that liquidity is continuing to improve in this market. This is definitely the type of indicator that we want to see as markets continue to move higher. We don't want to see that liquidity indicator decrease on these, on these rallies. So increasing liquidity is certainly good for options traders. We are trading at peak valuations. We're trading at 21 times forward earnings, which is substantially higher than where we were in February 2020. So this is, you know, you know many times we may not be making all-time highs or absolute highs on the S&P, but we are certainly making all-time highs from a valuations perspective because corporate profits and earnings are substantially lower than they were in January and February. So especially when we talk about market euphoria and market tops, market tops don't always have to be at absolute tops. Many times they could be at, at valuation tops. So keep that in mind as we kind of approach this peak val or as we are at peak valuation and continues to stretch um, the type of euphoria that we see in this market. Because generally speaking, market crashes are first uh, you first have market you you, you first have this this um period of of sheer euphoria where it just seems like uh, you know stocks are trading at absolute crazy valuations and we're starting to enter that territory so be careful um you know up till now pretty much high beta and growth and, and leverage plays have been fueling this rally but over the last you know yesterday we started to see again you know value and and other and defensive stocks start to play catch up um so this is some of the trends that we want to take a look at here today but before we jump into that i want to update you on some of the credit card spend data this is bank of america's credit card spend data uh, that i wanted to update you on first and foremost uh, the airlines are no longer providing as much in terms of uh, refunds you know so they're basically flat at this point there's no real spending but they aren't at least bleeding money anymore that's a good starting of that trend lodging is also starting to see a little bit of a pickup from basically uh down a hundred percent to now down only about eighty percent that's some of the first i would say trends that we're starting to see out of the travel stocks Restaurants also, instead of being down roughly about 50%, is now down about 36, 35%. So a little bit of pickup here on restaurant spending. Online electronics continues to remain incredibly strong. And this is fueling some of the semiconductor rallies that we're seeing. Furniture also consistently a strong um, player in this particular space. 
Uh, groceries and general merchandise starting to, uh, groceries has consistently been strong, but general merchandise starting to pick up a little. Home improvement, really seeing a bit of an acceleration in the last few weeks, which is why we really like Home Depot and Lowe's going into earnings this particular week. Total online retail also extremely strong. Um, so this is some of the, the data that we're currently looking at. If you look at card spend, it's really starting to normalize a little bit back towards, you know, in the teens, if you will, below low normal spending compared to May of last year. So really starting to get back to a little bit of normal in terms of spending, but most of it fueled by online electronics and online retail offsetting a lot of the losses that we've seen here in some of the other categories. So, you know, those are some of the, 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 the sectors to pay attention to. And one of the things that we want to point you to is really just this bifurcation that we're seeing in this market. And investing in a post-COVID-19 world is going to be very much understanding this bifurcation, understanding where money is flowing to and where money is flowing out of to decide your I would say long short strategy, if you will, um, being that digital strategies and e-commerce strategies clear winner versus while total card spend is down, e-commerce and online is growing. And this is across the board in all industries, whether you're talking about groceries, whether you're talking about clothing, whether you're talking about even restaurant spending, we've seen this bifurcation. So if you look at each industry, and you look at each industry from the, from the perspective of do com which companies in this particular sector have a digital and e-commerce and online strategy, which companies do not, and that is your long short strategy. I think it's most predominant in retail, it's most predominant in grocery, it's most predominant in restaurants. Um, where you're going to see the most opportunity of having this long short bifurcation in the market. You know, one of the most incredible uh, data points that I've been looking at is the fact that total card spend prior in terms of online was roughly about 15%. That's jumped to 30%. So we basically doubled that in about a month. Um, that is incredible shift in terms of bifurcation. So even payment processors, if you look at names like PayPal, which predominantly have 100% exposure to e-commerce, they are doing incredibly well compared to Visa, MasterCard, American Express, which obviously does a lot of physical stores. Um, so that's the way that you want to think about investing going forward. I want to give you a little data on travel entertainment as well, because we've been fielding a lot of questions regarding um, whether it's time to get back into some of these travel stocks. So first and foremost, uh, uh, airline spending is still have, has not picked up. It's still pretty much on the ground at basically zero. Um, but as you can see, lodging, so uh, predominantly Marriott, Hilton, um, some of the smaller restaurant, uh, some of the smaller hotel chains starting to see a little bit of a pickup in, in, um, spending, uh, Marriott reported earnings. I forget if it was last week or the week before, uh, I think it was last week reporting some uptick in, in, um, in bookings for for hotels, but I will say that that be careful about this trend in terms of tiptoeing back into some of these these stocks because I think that the travel industry is going to have a very tough time getting themselves back to normal. I don't think this is going to be a straight line higher. I think there's going to be a lot of bumps in the road, so be careful diving into some of those names. So that's some of the data that we're currently looking at. Um, we don't. Uh, you know, at this point, we're not looking a whole lot at economic data because it, there's really a huge disconnect between where the markets currently are trading and where the um, where some of the economic data and the fundamental data sit. And I think many people are a little bit weary of looking at that stuff. So um, I'm going to stay away from looking at that right now. I think I'm focusing more on price action, focusing on where the market is actually trading, irrespective of whether or not we believe it should be trading there, because um, that that doesn't matter as much. So first thing I want to point you to is uh, are some of the rotations that we've seen out of the high beta uh, growth sectors into more of the defensive and staple sectors. So industrials being one of them, industrials managed to climb its way back above its 20 week, I'm sorry, the December 2018 lows. So we certainly think that this is going to make a bit of a rally back towards a 20 week moving average, which is around 68. It is still trading within this, this trading range, if you will, 68 being this, um, 
a gap fill here. So we think that industrials can start making a rally here. But the one thing I will say is that industrials still below the 220 week moving average and money flow remains fairly weak. So be careful of rallies here in this particular sector. Same thing with financials. Financials started to come back to life yesterday up about 5%. This is the one, this is still one of the industries that are fairly challenged because it's below its December 2018 lows. Money flow remains relatively weak. It's below its 20 week moving average, but it is managed to break back above its 20 day moving average. But as you can see, every time it rallies significantly above the 20 day moving average, it gets rejected and it is making lower lows. So it is possible that this fails and starts to move lower, but we are starting to see signs of life here in financials. Uh, but th there are some major resistance levels that's about to come up against. Um, but, you know, we're seeing uh, there's a lot of interest in financials right now, being that it's very uh, it's very much a beaten down sector. It is a sector that if you're looking for dividends is relatively safe compared to, let's say, energy. Um, so many, many, uh, I think there's a lot of flow into financials looking for those stable dividends, especially as we enter into a more uncertain world. Utilities seeing a little bit of a bounce also. Utilities managed to bounce off the 200 week moving average. Looks like it might make a small rally back to the 20 week moving average, but price action here looks relatively weak here as you can see you have this kind of flag if it does break to the upside that puts us in a much more bullish position uh, but at this point we're still likely see perhaps a, a test of this uh, resistance level and perhaps a bounce lower so a lot of these rotations that we're seeing into the more defensive sectors may be short-lived but at on the surface right now they certainly seem to be fairly strong Energy also coming back to life up 8% yesterday. I think that certainly brings a lot of interest to the sector. Again, I, I can't stress enough just how bad the fundamentals of the energy sector currently look, uh, but it looks like it's about to break out above 38. This is something that we covered on Options Action or Mike and Carter covered on Option Actions last week looking for a breakout here. You know, I mentioned that you have this very quick gap fill up until about 42. So you have about a, a $4 move to the upside. That's possible here. You might get a very quick momentum play up to 42. But my concern is that 42 becomes your resistance and it kind of starts to roll over here again. So pay attention here to energy. There may be some very quick gains here in the next couple of days and then it might roll over. Uh, but if it breaks out above this level, which it very well might, you might see some quick gains to the upside on energy. Uh, staples. Actually, this is an old chart here on staples. I apologize. Um, these are some. Ah, so here, I want to take a look at semiconductors because semiconductors have started to come back to life as well. We've been talking about semiconductors for quite some time because it was one of the, first of all, it was one of the sectors that did not sell off as hard as most of the other sectors and came back to rebound significantly quicker. But over the last month, semis have really moved sideways and haven't, hasn't really uh, moved much and it continues to trade in a smaller and smaller range. Momentum has not confirmed any moves to the upside or downside, but semiconductors really starting to come back to life. And, you know, it has found, it has based above the 20 week moving average and it's been finding some small support here for weeks and looks like it might now have the momentum to potentially push it back into that 150 level. Again, we looked at that consumer spending data from Bank of America, online electronics being the, the strongest sector we've seen across the board. And that has been strong even before the bailout, even before the, um, stimulus checks started flowing before the tax refunds where we saw a lot of the home improvement, uh, you know, the online merchandise, the online spending kind of take off. This was a, this was a sector of the market that was strong well before that, mostly predominantly probably because people working from home need to buy things like computers and webcams and, and, and the, the electronics they need to work from home. So semiconductors remain incredibly strong here and it looks like it might be ready for another breakout. So that's one, one sector that you should definitely pay attention to. There are many names that are relatively strong, AMD, uh, Intel. Those are some of the, the big names I think are the ones that I would prefer to look at in this particular sector if you're looking for longs. Industri you know, I want to point us to silver because silver took off here on Friday and silver is a very good indicator of industrial demand. So one of the things that we've been uh, unsure of is whether or not 
we were going to see an uptick in industrial demand. And silver is a very good indicator of that. And the strong rally we've seen over the last couple of days is the first indication that industrial demand is starting to come back online, especially if you look at data coming out of China, both travel data, industrial demand data, um, economic activity and data have been fairly strong given the relatively weak outlook that many countries have put on reopening their economy and expecting their citizens to get back out. But silver giving us a glimpse into the fact that industrial demand is starting to come back and there is certain, and this is, you know, I think the, the jump here in silver prices is purely based on uh, just buying from an industrial demand perspective. So that's the first indication that from, from our perspective, the first real time indicator that gives us a better uh, glimpse into how industrial uh, demand is currently looking here, especially out of uh, main uh, users of this of this particular metal like China um, that have reopened up. So some of the travel data we're looking at China in terms of uh, the equivalent of their Uber rides, DD, is actually looking pretty relatively strong here. And we expect to see similar trends here in the U.S., so I want to point you to Uber. Uber is one of the names that we've been looking at for quite some time. It is one of the travel stocks that hasn't, uh, you know, hasn't sold off incredibly strongly and may actually have a, a better time coming back to life because they have a fairly diversified business. Uber Eats has been the uh, kind of saving them, if you will, compared to Lyft that doesn't have that, that business. They've just um, entered a potential agreement to buy Grubhub, which expands their, their footprint within this particular space and it puts them into a much more dominant space within food delivery. So between food delivery being a trend, as we saw before on that online spending, we see a, a clear bifurcation in terms of restaurant spend between online versus physical uh, restaurants, obviously. But the fact that Uber has consolidated a position within the um, uh, uh, food delivery space, as well as will obviously capitalize on more Uber rides as people get back to normal and people may not feel as comfortable getting on the train. That's one of the reasons that we particularly like this stock. You know, it's managed to just peak back above its $32, $33 resistance level. It looks like a bit of a head and shoulders, I will say. Um, but I do, uh, right now I'm looking at this break above 30 and rallying back up to 40. So it is, uh, price action yesterday got all the way up to 36, got knocked down. But if you do see Uber start to break back above above $34. That's really where you can start seeing some potential gains here. And again, going back to the options piece, as we've said over the last few weeks, we've predominantly been selling options because volatility is high. We don't have a strong directional view because the markets have really just been battling it out between these you know, 285, 280, 290, 295 area. It hasn't had any strong directional moves, but we're starting to see that change. We're starting to see stocks break out to the upside. We're starting to see broader leadership. So we expect to see more potential upside. And with volatility coming down, VIX below 30, we can start venturing into some of these strategies that allow us to buy options and take on the type of risk to reward that we typically prefer, which is risking less to potentially make more. So if you look at a name like Uber, if you do expect that break up to that 42 level, you can certainly continue to sell premium because volatility is still relatively high. But um, and, and just to show you a comparison, you know, the strategies that we've been looking at uh, recently, which is selling premium. So I would sell something like a 33 and a half, buy maybe a 30 and a half, risk something like um, $185 to make 115. This is the type of strategy that we predominantly have been using when markets do not have a strong directional move, especially when markets are volatile. But now as volatility starts to come down and we start to see more potential moves to the upside, as crazy as that might sound, these types of strategies start to make more sense because you're risking less money, especially as we reach peak valuations and reach relatively, um, uh, you know, whether it's a 52 week high or relative highs, you always have a higher probability of a pullback, which is why it's important to protect yourself by utilizing strategies like buying strategies where you're risking less to potentially make more. So if you do get that move to the upside, let's say Uber rallies up to $40, I am risking $235 to make 365. Those types of returns are what I'm looking for. And in the event that markets really turn sour and start to 
move significantly lower, I'm risking substantially less than the strategies that I'm looking at here. So, and just to help you compare this apples to apples, if let's say I'm willing to risk $1,000 on these two trades, here I'm risking 925, here I'm risking 940. If the stock pulls back, I'm risking the same amount here, 925 versus 940. But if the stock does rally, notice how, how much outperformance I get here on the call spread, buying that option, buying that debit spread versus selling that credit spread. Uh, for the same amount of risk here, I would only make $575. Here I'd make $1,000, almost double what I would make. So as you start to approach these types of, of opportunities in the market and you I know it sounds crazy to continue to buy at these types of valuations, and, but this is really where the market is. And if, if, you know, a bit of deja vu from where we experienced back here from November to January, where we said we're at peak valuations, markets haven't corrected, it keeps moving higher, momentum keeps continuing to not confirm these higher highs, but markets continue to move higher. That's the same market that we're currently in right now. Really what you want to do is you want to get a little bit more defensive when you have three back-to-back -back strong days like we have over the past few days. You might get a bit of a pullback. And then on these pullbacks, you definitely want to consider looking for long opportunities in this particular case. So you can use Options Play, which is available to you free of charge here at First Trade. You just go to your home screen, go to the Options Wizard, you click on Launch, and this gives you a tool that allows you to type in any symbol such as Uber or any of the symbols that we were looking at to quickly look at some of the strategies that we were looking at here today. Um, let me see if I can get this to load here for you. But that's the research that we wanted to share with you here today. I hope that this was useful in helping you better understand where the current market <clears throat> Uh, positioning is, how to look at the different sectors, what research we're looking at to inform our trading decisions, and hope, hopefully giving you some ideas for trading uh, this particular trading day. So with that, I want to thank everyone for taking the time out here this morning. I hope that you guys find this useful, and I'll see you guys here next week. Thank you so much. Have a great trading day.